Hello, I'm Hayley and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you going through my TBR. I talk about the TB books that are on my TBR a lot, but I don't ever actually like show you my list of books that I have to read. Now these are all of my physical books that I have. They fit on one tier of this cart. So I've just got them all organized up the top by like color, kind of by color, not really. Um, and I also have some hidden on this side as well. I, my goal last year was to downsize my TBR and get through all of my books and I did that. So the same situation is going on this year where my goal is to read all of these books and get them down to next to nothing. That way, the more books that I bring in, the more books I'm reading. Um, my goal for this year and next year is to read a few more Mostly next year is to re do some more rereads, so that's what I've been trying to minimize my TBR as much as possible so that I can get back to the books that I enjoy and I can curate my bookshelf to accommodate what I would reread and what I love to read. I don't know where to start now. <laughs> I really don't know where to start. Maybe I should try starting with the first book that I've recently bought, like the most recent purchases. So I went to a bookstore, bought one book, and then the next day I went back to the bookstore and bought the, bought the books that I was eyeing off. So this is one of the books that I was eyeing off that I had to go back for. This is the Tattoo Dictionary, an A to Z guide to secret lang languages of tattoos. This is by Trent Atkin Smith, illustrated by Ashley Tyson. And it is a sort of it is a dictionary of the different tattoo types and where, like, the meanings that they have for different places. So how it goes into some of the styles of tattoos. Um, I personally really like tattoos. I always have been really interested in them. I used to dream about the day that I could finally get tattoos. And I am now 20, turning 23 and I don't have any. Anyway, another book that I brought that day was... This one here, this is The Woman in Black and Other Ghost Stories by Suzanne Hill. I have been going to the same bookstore for years now and I see this there and I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful, I want it. And I put it back, I never buy it. And the other day I was watching YouTube and it was recommendations for gothic horrors novels. Um, or just gothic novels, novels in general. Um, my new favourite genre is gothic horror. And this one is apparently a classic that I didn't know about. Um, so this whole time I've been eyeing it off and wanting to read it. Comes to show that it's actually one of the books that I desperately need to read like ASAP. <laughs> so I bought it and I feel like this is going to be very quickly read. Um, because... It's one of the books that I'm like most anticipating out of my entire TBR currently. So those, those two, where is it? Oh, it's hiding. I was like, I swear I bought another book. The day that I went in and I decided to put, I put this one back. I instead brought Edgar Allan Poe poems, The Raven and other poems, I should say. And it's just Edgar Allan Poe and Poe. <laughs> I read his short story collection um, and I loved it, so I thought I would try some of his poetry as well. Very exciting. And the next ones that I've read, and um, I've picked up, I'm also reading one of them at the moment. I brought this collection. Um, I have the African myths that I'm currently reading, and then we have my Norse myths and legends. I have Greek myths and legends and I have Japanese myths and legends and I did buy two of them and then order in the other two just because I wanted the full collection. I think there is another African Tales as well that I'm going to 100% purchase when the time comes. Um, I have just limited myself from buying things and then I kind of went crazy in the past like month and a bit so I am now not buying any more books until I've read some of these books, you know what I mean? Um, and these are just really exciting to get through. Um, I feel like the next book that I want to read will probably be The Norse. 
and the de I'm desperate to get to the Japanese. I just, I, I have always been really interested in mythology. Speaking of mythology, I'm now going out of order of what I recently bought, but who cares. Um, I've got Loki here. This one is written by Mackenzie Lee. Um, Loki where mischief lit lies and Loki has always been one of my favorite characters at least in the earlier movies and I really 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 want to get more into my Marvel fiction. I have a TBR list of Marvel comics that I'm also reading at the moment but because they're not physical I'm not talking about them right now. So that it's going to be read alongside my Norse mythology and I'm also going to read one of my l books that have been on this TBR for years now. I bought this for $10 at a bookstore um, so I was like I have to get it and it's been on my shelf for the longest now. I think it's been on there for two years before I've finally said that I'm going to read it. I was supposed to read it last year and I didn't. There's a sticker on there that won't get off. Um, but this is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard by Rick Riordan. Um, I've read uh, two of the other Rick Riordan series, uh, Percy Jackson, obviously, and the Heroes of Olympus series. Um, and I'm really excited to get into this while I read other Norse mythology books. Um, it's just able for me to sort of dive in from a more middle grade perspective and get a good overview of things while having a great fun old time. I love Rick Riordan's books and they are so enjoyable. Okay, what's next? I may as well just talk about Emma while we're here. I got this given to me as a Christmas gift from my sister and this is Emma by Jane Austen. Uh, there's basically, I can't, I've seen an Emma adaptation before and I, I feel like I need to do like a sit down and read this book and, and watch the movie all in like one hit because I love reading books and then comparing them to the way that things have been shown in the movie. Um, I, to be honest, I don't remember what the fuck this book is about. Can you imagine, imagine anything near a perfect beauty than Emma altogether? If I remember anything, she was annoying. That's really bad that I have a classic here that I've been wanting to read, but I do not have any memory of what it's about. Is that good enough for you to know? Probably not. Anyway, we're going to quickly move on to the next one because I don't... Hang on, I think that might have actually been a Easter present, not a Christmas present. Because I think I've read most of my Christmas presents. Where, where are we going next? Another book that I've been meaning to read, this one was a book from last year that I did not pick up and this is All That Remains by Patricia Cornwell. Um, I received this as a, you should read this for my nan, and it is about murder. I believe murder. As she starts to investigate, she finds that the vital evidence is being withheld from her or even faked, and all time a cunning sadistic killer is still at large. Um, so yeah, this is about a Dr. K. Scarpet's task as a chief medical examiner is made more difficult. She has to, um, figure out how the murder happened without all of the evidence. I love a good old crime thriller. Um, I love a good old horror. Um, I think this is just going to be like a crime thriller and with a little bit of detective work and I'm excited for that. Um, it's quite an older book. This is definitely a well-loved secondhand copy um, and I'm excited to read this. I don't, I think it's been long enough now that I'm not going to be able to talk about it with my nan but I have to think that she liked it enough to recommend it to me so that's good enough. <laughs> um, I probably should go to these ones over here before I forget them. Uh, another book that I've been meaning to read is The Wailing Woman by Maria Lewis. This is a book that I picked up in a book box um, and I don't know, it's about a wailing woman, a banshee, um, 
she i think this is like the like third book in a series but you can read it as a standalone i'm not 100 percent sure this one i feel like i'm not gonna force myself to get all the way through if i read a few chapters and it doesn't make any sense then i'm definitely going to dnf it and probably pass it on to someone else um, it's an Australian author, so I am hoping that this ticks the boxes that I want it to. I'm under the impression that this may be mi my, <laughs> this may be middle grade, um, or it could be young adult, so it's not going to be as spooky as I want it to be, but it's about a lady, a girl, who is a banshee, um, and she is weak, condemned, powerless, and silent. And her six sisters have been told their entire have been told their entire lives since their species was first banished from Ireland, um, and I believe she. This may be a love story. We don't know yet, but the truth comes at a cost. With Sadie and Text forced to run for their lives, their journey leads them to new friends, old enemies, and finally her true voice. One that could shatter the supernatural world forever. Wow. So I believe this is one of those books where like the first two follow other supernatural characters. And then this one will probably have them all meet up at some point. Um, just based on that blurb. But I'm not too bothered. It doesn't really bother me that much that I don't really know everything that's going on. I'm a serial pick up a book midway through the series and then be like, oh crap, that's not, this isn't the beginning, why doesn't it make sense? So, um, this one here is Pan's Labyrinth. I know that the Spanish title is like the Labyrinth of the Fawn, um, and because the character, like the actual character here is, is a fawn, not a satyr, so Pan's Labyrinth is just to market to the Western audience. Um, and I have read this book before, but I've read it in audiobook format, and I've owned this, like, edition for a long time now, and I really want to just sit down and annotate the crap out of it. I really want to compare this and the movie and just really dive into the world that is, um, Pan's Labyrinth. I've got some more paperbacks here. I don't tend to gravitate towards paperbacks. I usually go for hardcovers. They're my favourite. But in Australia, they're really expensive and they're very rare to find in the bookstore. And pretty much all, most of these books, all of these books I have purchased from a bookstore. Um, from the same bookstore too, actually. <laughs> um, but these ones here I purchased in paperback because I knew that I was going to tear the shit out of them and annotate them because they're books that... Um, I feel like I just need to be annotated. So this book is Growing Up Queer in Australia, and this is edited by Benjamin Law. And these are just short stories um, centered around queer and LGBT Australians. And as a queer Australian myself, I thought, may as well. <laughs> There's a few others in this um, like type of series. Um, there's a bunch of collections, so there's one like Growing Up Aboriginal in Australia, there's one Growing Up um, Foreigner or something in Australia, I don't know. Um, there's Growing Up as a Woman in Australia, there's like lots of different um, books that go along with this particular book, and I do plan on purchasing the others if I enjoy the way that this laid is laid out. I am so iffy about short stories, yet I keep picking up short stories to read. Um, I don't know why. I just do. I just do. That one screamed to me. And speaking of, I don't think this one's a short story, but this is called Murder Your Darlings by Rory Peter Clark. This is about book writing. It's about um, getting all of your thoughts on out and writing a book. Um, I myself struggle when it comes to uh, putting my thoughts down on paper or on the computer and I thought I would pick up more books about writing so that I can have something to reference when I'm feeling like I can't do this, my brain is stupid. Um, I don't really know the whole concept like that this book is going to go into. I do think it's going to be a bit... Um, up front 
especially in like so there's parts here it's like shape a sentence for a desired effect to achieve clarity but the main clause first with the subject and verb together and learn to live inside worlds recognize both their literal meaning and their associations so it dives into specific um, parts of the writing process that will definitely help me when it comes to trying to write my things my things I have a few thoughts and even last night I was thinking of a story idea in the bathtub and I was like oh my god this will be amazing if I could actually sit down to write it okay we have another classic here we've got the scarlet letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne I um, constantly see things on my newsfeed about this book memes that I don't understand and boy do I want to know I associate the Scarlet Letter with Easy A and I feel like it's about time I understood what the A stands for the Scarlet A um, I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not I just know that it's a well-known classic that I feel like would be nice to be able to tick off um, I don't know if it's going to be something that I adore or that I love but it's a one-time read for me like you know if it is just a one-time read at least I have read it um and then the last book on my list here holy crap I thought I had so many more books but I really don't um is this one is Deserter by Junji Ito this one will be able to fly through really quick it's just a story collection um it's a bit spooky but we love it it is a graphic novel with lots of short stories, horror short stories I should say, and I'm really excited to get through this. I've read the Frankenstein with the short stories from that, and I thought I bought another one, but I don't think I did. I don't remember. <laughs> My memory is short. I thought I had two. I thought I had three actually, and maybe I do. I need to go through my um, bookshelf to find more. Oh crap, I just realised I have more, um, I have a lot of chunkier books down over in this corner here, and I have, ugh, I have a bunch of, um, fairy tale short stories and stuff that I was planning on finishing last year, and I only got part way through, so I just need to catch up on a lot of, um, specifically, uh, Grimm's fairy tales, and some hands Christian Anderson, um, fairy tales um i also have this giant chunky uh war and peace which i do not plan on reading this year i think next year is going to be when i sit down and try and get through like a chapter or, or like a part throughout the entire year i want to have this one be like the i'm reading this all year getting through it slowly and able to annotate things highlight things like i want this to be my copy my you know and especially because of how chunky it is it's definitely going to have to be a read when i'm like focusing and like i'm able to sort of study it a bit i really want to read <laughs> i really want to do that with anna Karenina because i really enjoyed that book when i read it um but i don't know i think doing it with war and peace is going to be enough <laughs> you know i'm probably never going to want to do it again <laughs> we also have here uh, the Twin Peaks a novel, Mark Frost. This one is, I believe, the third book when it comes to, like, the, like, series. I don't know how to describe it. So, um, this is, like, we've got the TV show of Twin Peaks, right? We've got the older version and the newer version. And then we have, like, a movie. And then we have, like... I want to say like six books and they all kind of go between things so I think the first the two TV shows go first and then there's one like novel um, maybe another novel I'm not 100% sure and then there's this and this is about the plate like the town itself Twin Peaks there is like news clippings and like it's like a textbook basically but in like the coolest way I love when they have like news um, clippings they have like notepad 
scribbles they have case files like i love this type of stuff so when i saw it i literally just bought it and didn't even hesitate i didn't know what twin peaks was and now that i have started the tv show i do know what it is um i do need i've put it on pause for a bit now and i will definitely get back to it but this will probably not be a book that i will read in the year because that's a lot of media to get through and i don't want to like over pressure myself to get to this point you know what I mean like I just want to take it in and enjoy it as much as I can I feel like I've talked your ear off now I'm gonna go eat my food and probably get ready for work so yeah you have a lovely day thank you for listen to, listening to me ramble on about the books that I currently am looking forward to getting to and that I own so yeah bye bye